Welcome to Conspiracy Fact Press. Today we have a special video for you guys about the Democratic 2020 presidential candidates. We have all this source compiled for you on conspiracyfactpress.com as usual. And here's the faces of all those 24 so far announced presidential candidates for 2020. <clears throat> who are they? Start off with Michael Bennett, who is a Democratic member of the U.S. Senate representing Colorado. He got his start under John Hickenlooper, who was a then mayor for Denver. And he actually has one of the more centrist positions of spending economic opportunity and tax cuts for families with children, which is unusual for these Democratic candidates, that most of them want to raise your taxes. Creepy Uncle Joe Biden. I think most of you guys already know about him. If you don't, check out our video we made about Creepy Joe Biden and why he has zero chance, even though he might be leading the polls currently, and getting elected. He was former vice president. We also have Bill de Blasio, who is the Democratic mayor of New York City in New York and is failing miserably when he announced all the New Yorkers were up in arms. They were all rolling on the dirty subway floors laughing and stuff, saying it's a joke that he would even try to run. They say he want to mismanage the country like he mismanaged New York. <laughs> Someone else who has zero chance is Cory Booker, who is a Democratic member of the U.S. Senate from New Jersey. He's trying to focus on unity and finding commonality by addressing inequality and racial discrimination. So he wants to unify through identity politics. So it's just another leftist tactic. You know what? The only thing they unite on is obstruction and trying to impeach Trump. <laughs> and some of their other far left uh, ideologies. He's also one of the ones responsible for co-sponsoring the anti-lynching bill uh, that was pushed through in the wake of the Smollett case, and they actually used that as an anecdotal example. Steve Bullock is the Democratic governor of Montana, and this guy's actually somewhat of a centrist in certain aspects, where he's trying to claim that he did good work collaborating with both sides of the aisle as a governor, and that he's trying to reform campaign finance law. But of course, he's just like all the other far leftists with being pro-abortion, hating the Second Amendment, and it goes on. I don't know about you, but unless you're from Montana, you probably haven't heard about this joker either. Pete Buckkeg, I don't know how to say that name, but this dude is another joke, Democratic mayor of South Bend, Indiana, and he thinks that he's going to be able to, just like uh, Mayor de Blasio, run the country into the ground like he ran a city. Served as a lieutenant in the U.S. Navy Reserve and served in a seven-month deployment in Afghanistan. Sad to see people that actually went to fight for this country become a Democrat. <laughs> Democrats hate this country. There's got to be some internal conflict there. Some real heavy turmoil. So this dude's a flip-flopper. His stance changed on vaccines. And he just has a crap load of other bad ideas, which will probably flop on anyways. None of these guys have power in their convictions, you know? It's just, they jump from one talking point to the next, and then back down when anything's actually about to happen, so that they still have their talking points to recite year after year, while nothing gets done for the American people. Julian Castro. I don't know who he is, I doubt you do either, but he emphasized education when announcing his candidacy, and saying that he achieved universal preschool in San Antonio during his time as mayor, and would do the same nationally. All these small-time mayors think they're going to run the country. Promotes Medicare for all. He just wants to undo Trump's policies and do completely unthinkable things like abolish ICE. They are the number one agency for combating human trafficking, and he wants to stop that. Smart idea, right? Just like the rest of the Democratic ideas. John Delaney, former Democratic member of the United States House of Representatives. He represented Maryland's 6th Congressional District. He wants to focus on the future. Mainly on globalization, automation, and technology. And he was the first Democratic candidate to announce he would be running in 2020. 
Tulsi Gabbard is the Democratic U.S. House of Representatives from Hawaii. She hasn't publicly said anything about her position on the Green New Deal, but proposed a bill in 2017 to transition 100% to renewable energy to generate electricity by 2035. And, of course, she's a Medicare for All and wants taxpayers to pay for abortion through Planned Parenthood. Even though she's been deployed on two tours of duty in the Middle East, she's talking tough about guns, but she's not really putting stuff forward. But really, all these people are just the same Democratic puppet. They're trying to get the nomination, get elected, and then just be a puppet for the establishment that was already been in control for decades and that Trump's finally shaking up. That's their number one goal of all these people is to just undo Trump's success and to revert America back towards its downward slope into a third world country. We got this gatekeeper, Gillibrand. She's a Democratic member of the U.S. Senate from New York. She's focusing on addressing sexual assault in the military, health care for 9-11 first responders, which is a great thing. Increasing transparency in politics, yeah, right. Medicare for all, of course. Fun fact is court papers reveal Gillibrand's father worked for Nixvium, the sex cult. And she's definitely deep state just like the rest. We got Mike Gravel, who is a Democratic former U.S. Senator from Alaska. He does not even intend to seek the Democratic nomination. He says our only aim is pushing the field left by appearing in the Democratic debates. A spokesperson said Gravel would withdraw from the race and endorse the most progressive candidate. What a joke! So this guy's running, but he knows he isn't going to win. They're just wanting to push the party one way. It's just ridiculous. How far left can they go? I mean, Trump's already pushed them almost over the edge. They're so far left. We got Kamala Harris, who slept her way to the bottom. She is a Democratic member of the U.S. Senate from California. She's also trying to focus on economic issues. And every person that says that, they're not trying to focus on economic issues is in, in a sense that Trump's been doing it, where he wants to further American prosperity and build up this people's economy. She just wants to implement socialism. I mean, that's really the bottom line. She wants universal pre-K, debt-free college, tax cut for working, middle-class families, Medicare for all. I mean, it, it all goes on. She was a cohort and Cory Booker getting the anti-lynching bill passed. After nearly 200 failed attempts, Karma Sutra Harris got no chance. John Hickenlooper was a former Democratic governor of Colorado, and he's focusing on the methane emissions laws with environmentalist oil and gas companies that he implemented, expanding Medicaid, pushing through gun control legislation because he can't read the Second Amendment or just doesn't understand it. He wants to expand background checks and limit gun magazines. He's all about climate change and gay marriage and LGBTQP, all that good stuff, rights and abortion. He wants all that stuff. And he wants the taxpayer to pay for it, too. We got Jay Inslee, who is the Democratic governor of Washington, and he called climate change the pillar of his campaign. <laughs> he said, I'm the only candidate who will make defeating climate change our nation's number one priority. Well, I guess that's because Ocasio-Cortez can't run. <laughs> This dude's just another joke. We got Amy Klobuchar, who is a U.S. Senator from Minnesota, and she's focusing on automatic voter registration so they can rig elections further, reducing the amount of money in politics, reinstating climate regulation that were eliminated by the Trump administration. It's all just about getting back at Trump. None of these people have had a single original idea for a bill that would benefit the American people out of all these. Have you heard anything good or original or anything that, that you think would support, uh, that, that you feel is representative of your wishes? We got Wayne Messam, who is the Democratic mayor of Miramar, Florida. He's focusing on canceling $1.5 trillion in student debt. He's trying to challenge the NRA. Wants to jump right back into the Paris Accord. We got Seth Moulton, who is a U.S. House of Representative from... Massachusetts is another former military man from the Marine Corps, served four tours, and now somehow finds himself on the Hate America Party. It's really surprising. He actually had the balls to challenge Nancy Pelosi as Speaker of the House in 2016. Lost. We all saw how that went for him. And of course, he's all about climate change and abortion rights and all this stuff. And if you remember, it's not just about, you know, all the way up to abortion. They even want 
after birth abortion, which last I checked was, I mean, murder. I mean, there's no more argument about it's her body. It's, you know, you, her body. You can't say anything, which I mean, it's got a whole nother separate heartbeat, you know, blood type, but it's actually outside the mom and they still want to kill it. And then they always try to spin it like it's, it's not just bad for women. It's bad for families and bad for communities to not kill babies. Beta O'Rourke, this jokester who just, he just keeps having skeletons fall out of his closet. Not only was he caught red-handed smuggling up illegal immigrants into his district in Texas, uh, caught by James O'Keefe in Project Veritas. You guys should go check that out. It's pretty amazing. But he also wants to take down the border wall that most of America wants, or at least all the Americans that aren't brainwashed by mainstream media. Tim Ryan is a U.S. representative from Ohio, and he's going to focus on manufacturing jobs, even the ones that, that try to get away from the socialism and say that they're going to fo focus on creating jobs and all this other stuff. They got no chance of doing it as well as Trump has so far. Uh, even if they get the nomination for the Democrat Party, they're going to be going up Trump boasting about the greatest economy ever, lowest unemployment for all these different minority groups that the Democrats love to cling to, their little identity politics. He's going to tell about how we have more people in the job force. It's just going to be very hard for any Democratic candidate to, to even talk about the economy against Trump. It's just like all the other Democrats, all about illegal immigrants, doesn't want a border wall, Medicare for all, climate change is going to kill us, on and on. And then we got Bernie Sanders, who I shouldn't even have to go into. I think you guys know about him. If you don't, nobody's going to give this clown a chance. Even with all the hype he created in 2016, after he ended up just bowing down and surrendering the nomination to Hillary Clinton. This dude's a socialist joke that enjoys being a cap success story. Multi-millionaire with multiple properties. We got Eric Swallowswell, and his main thing is about trying to nuke American citizens that don't want to give up their guns. Yeah, he said that. He's also one of the shift-like antagonists trying to just bang on the impeachment drum all day with no merit or any kind of... We got Elizabeth Pocahontas Warren, who's a complete joke and fraudster. I wonder if she's going to run as our first Indian president. <laughs> she's all about focusing on economic issues, just like all the rest of them, including socialism. Universal child care, student loan, debt relief, the Green New Deal, of course, right? Medicare for all, all this stuff. Her professional experience scamming both the government and academic sectors as a Native American. Marianne Williamson, she wants to bring a moral and spiritual awakening to the United States with her candidacy. And as far as legislation goes, it's the usual Medicare for all, the Green New Deal, and 100 billion reparations for slavery. I would actually be on board with the reparations if they were able to take the money from the slave owners and then pay the families of the slaves' descendants. But really, it's just a talking point. There's no plan to make it happen. And if you're wondering about her qualifications, she's a well-established spiritual guru with no previous political experience. She's mainly a lecturer and author with 12 books. I bet they're all esoteric. We got Andrew Yang, and the cornerstone of Yang's platform is universal basic income. So just like socialist Ocasio-Cortez, he wants to assure people even unwilling to work. That sure isn't going to incentivize people to work harder or to fend for themselves. And then he's got these crazy ideas about fining gun manufacturers $1 million for each person killed by their weapons. What if we tried that with other things? What if car manufacturers got held responsible for each person that died in one of their cars? That'd be pretty crazy, huh? Are we going to sue Tide? Because teenagers are stupid enough to eat some Tide Pods. We're going to sue Tide over that? Dude's a joke. But that's your complete list on these 2020 Hate America Democrat presidential candidate hopefuls. Even though there's so many Democrats already entering the race, I doubt we've seen yet who's going to actually receive the Democratic nomination to run against Donald Trump in 2020. Our prediction is that we're going to see somebody come up as more of a centrist, and they're going to try to drop... If the Democrats even want to stand a chance, they're going to have to go in a more centrist position. They're going to have to ditch all the silly Green New Deal crap and reconcile some of their policies like open borders, which almost no Americans want. So we'll probably see somebody come up that's going to pretend to be more of a centrist, even though they'll probably just be another puppet and that's going to take all their talking points from, uh, from who's ever calling the shots. Where we go when we go wall. If you like the shirt, 
Links in the description. Where we go, one we go all. Boom! Let us know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Click the notification bell to get all of our content as soon as it comes out. Check out the other platforms we're on, including Patreon, where you can leave a monthly donation, or PayPal, where you can just make a one-time donation if you like the channel and you'd like to help support us.